What is going on everybody and welcome to part 12 of our deep learning with neural networks TensorFlow and Python tutorial series. In this tutorial what we're going to be talking about is the convolutional neural network or CNN or convnet if you're a cool kid. So the convolutional neural network is basically state of the art for recognizing what an image is, what's in images, or even playing roles in doing things like assigning captions for images. So the convolutional neural network breaks down into basically the following structure. You have some input data and with that input data you're gonna do some convolutions or some convolving and that generally is just creating feature maps and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit but for now we'll just stick with convolve. And then you're going to do some pooling, usually max pooling. Again, we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on. And each one of these you do is going to be a layer. Or a hidden layer, better put, actually. So each one of those is your hidden layer. And then generally you will add one fully connected layer Uh, which would also be a hidden layer as well. And then finally, you will output whatever your output ought to be. So that's kind of the idea. So again, you take your input data, you convolve it, you pool it. You usually will convolve and pool again just because you're going to have two likely hidden layers, at least to start real basic, two hidden layers. Then you'll have a fully connected layer. A fully connected layer is identical to the hidden layers of our typical just simple neural network, that multi-layer perceptron model. And then finally the output, again, same as the output from a multi-layer perceptron model. So now let's talk about what convolve is and what pool is. So when you do a convolution, this is generally just any form of mapping or creating a feature map from an original data set. So Generally what this is going to involve is it's just going to be this moving region, this moving window over your image that is looking for something or in some way is going to create a feature out of a window of pixels in some sort of uh, n by n of pixels. It's going to look for something or do something basically to take that, that region of pixels and classify it or call it something. So sometimes you might have this searching through an image looking for horizontal lines or vertical lines or edges and, and so on. So you might use something like OpenCV, for example. So to, to, to visualize this, let's take a, an image. And this will be a photorealistic image of a cat. Okay, and the image in general, you're going to break it down by pixel, but I can't break this image down by pixel. So let's just pretend we're breaking this one down by pixel. Good enough. So each of these little squares is, is a pixel, let's pretend. So in the convolution step, let's say you're going to take a 3x3 three three convolution. So you might start with a window that is like this. And that window is going to, only, is going to basically pertain to a new, we'll call it cell, and it'll be that. And then we're going to shift that window, and we could shift it two spots over. So we could make that window um, here. We can make that next window right here. right? So there's a little bit of overlap there. So we'll make that there just for kicks for now. And that would be here. And now we've reached the edge, and we're all set. So then we would move the window down to that left, where now the 3x3 three three is here. And that would correspond to this window. I didn't draw the line of the blue one, but I'm sure you get it. And then finally, our last 3x3 three three shifted over would be like this, okay? And that would correspond to this window here. Okay, so we just keep doing that just to the point where we're not actually shifting any pixels. Or, or rather, not shifting. To the point where we're not skipping any pixels. So if this is your convolution, what is pooling? So let's say you've done some convolution, and convolution has just produced values for us. 
So again, when we convolved, if you remember from a few seconds ago, if you can remember that far long ago, uh, we created new boxes, and each of these new boxes, or in each of these new kind of regions of the image, they might actually have values in them, like 2 and 1 and 4 and 3. Something like that. So let's imagine this is a new, basically, uh, feature map, and we'll just add some values here. Okay, so let's say this is that new feature map. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move, we're going to do pooling, and we'll do a... We'll do a three by three pooling. That'll extremely simplify this and make this quick. So the pooling that we're gonna do is a three by three. And when we pool, it's a little different from when we created the feature map. Yes, when we created the feature map, we did what pooling is actually gonna do for us, but we also kind of extracted value, whereas pooling is simply simplifying. So let's take a three by three pool, and this is gonna be a max pool. So we're looking for the max value. That max value is a four. So in this case, it would be a four. And we'll just make a box around it, I guess. And then we could shift it over two. And then we've got this box. The max value is a three. And then we come down. And here the max value is a four. And then again, here the max value is a three. So that's an extremely simplified version of what pooling is. But, and we never had a value here. This is the great unknown value. <laughs> anyway. That's an extremely simplified version of what pooling does, um, but that is what pooling does. And together, convolution plus the pool equals a hidden layer. Okay, and then you we had that fully connected term at the end. And that just means a fully connected is just you've got neurons and they're just fully connected to each other. And we've kind of already spoken on that, so hopefully you understood that already. And then you finally have your output, which we've also already covered, and this is exactly the same as before. Let's say the first one's cat, dog, then horse. So these might all connect to each other again. So you've got cat, dog, horse, maybe this outputs a five, this is a two, and this is a one. So then of course the winner is cat, and in our hypothetical convolutional neural network, uh, we are successful. <laughs> okay, so again, we start with input data, we do our convolutions and pooling, and together with convolution and pooling, you've got a hidden layer. You'll probably have two hidden layers at least in our basic example that we are actually going to do in TensorFlow, you'll have two hidden layers, so convolution pooling. Then you'll have a fully connected layer, and it's arguable whether or not this is actually of use, but people do it anyway, so we're going to continue doing it. And then you have the output, which again is just the same as before. So basically from fully connected to output, it's the same as any other neural network. So doing this in TensorFlow is actually really simple. We can mo slightly modify our, our initial code to work with this. It's actually pretty impressive how easy it is given how different uh, the model itself is actually, especially when you have something like sparsely connected layers and then, um, and then just pooling, which is not quite something we've done before. So anyways, we're gonna do that in TensorFlow and see how just how simple that is. And we're gonna do it against the MNIST dataset and using that script that we've been basically using all the way up to this point, the same one that we did with the simple multi-layer perceptron model, the same one we did with the recurrent network, recurrent neural network that is, and then here with the, con the convenet. So anyways, questions, comments, leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. Until next time.